A little while ago, any cubic had approached me and asked me if I'd like to check out the Cobra S1. Any cubic have been around for a little while now and originally founded in 2015. I've always considered any cubic as one of the leaders in the 3D printing world. In fact, my very first four printers were all AnyCubics, uh, part of the Photon series. They were resin printers. Now, they made their mark with a filament printer. So when they approached me to check out this particular model, I was very keen to see if the quality of their resin printers showed in their filament printers as well. AnyCubic were kind enough to send me the combo version, which includes the Ace Pro. This unit is a four color automatic uh, filament feeder as well as a dryer. I found that the Cobra S1 was very easy to set up from the time I'm opening the box. It should take about 10 to 15 minutes to set up. This plastic tray serves no purpose other than to keep the Ace Pro in place during shipping. There are a few screws that you gotta make sure you remove. Uh, these ones are on the side of the build plate and there's one on the back as well. This is a monitoring camera. Unfortunately, it's only 480p. On the back of the unit is the poop chute, and once it cleans the head, it just shoots it straight out the back, out of this exit, and you do need to put a tray behind it or else it's gonna end up behind your bench. On the right side of the unit, there's a USB port. On the back, these are the connections that connect up to the Ace Pro. You've also got a standard kettle lead, and the filament guide into the machine. Now let's check out what comes in the small accessory box. This is the anti-blocking module which brings in the four different colored filaments into the machine. USB stick that contains the slicer software. Cable to connect up the Ace Pro. There's a couple of power leads for the top unit and the printer. This is the spool to hold the filament. The activated carbon for the air filtering inside the machine. This is a spare nozzle cleaning module that goes on the inside of the machine. Also some screws, as well as some cable organizers, and some lubricant. Now, what world are we in where they need to tell you not to eat lubricant? And finally, a nozzle cleaner. Now, let's check out what any cubic call the Color Engine Pro. But I've been calling it the Ace Pro, and we'll continue with that. Once you open it up, in the little bag, we have the filament tubes, there's four of those, as well as some filament samples. This unit is capable of drying filament rolls for hours on end if need be. The unit also has a standard power connection for a kettle lead. The upper socket on the back of this unit also gives you the ability to connect to a second Ace Pro. These are the four filament inputs. This is the filament spool holder, which attaches to the back of the unit. And you regular viewers will know how much I hate things that attach to the back. Lucky for me, I won't need to use it. So let's attach this anti-blocking module now. This unit has a couple of locating pins, so it just pops into place. And you then use the M2.5 screws. They're 25 millimeters long. And using the provided Allen key, you can then secure it into place and then plug in the six pin socket into the back of the unit and finally connect up the inlet tube to the top of that module. On the inside of the unit towards the back is a little uh, recess there, just a matter of popping open the door and inserting this little bag of activated carbon. On the other side of that perforated little panel inside the cabinet is an extraction fan. With the printer almost done, let's load up the Ace Pro unit. Now, AnyCubic sent me four different colors and I'll tell you, they've got some really strange names. Things like Peach Pink, Interstellar Violet, Tropical Turquoise, and Spring Leaf. Better known as Green, Orange, Purple, and Blue. <laughs> Once it was all filled up, I popped the unit on top of the printer now, a little bit later on, I did add a piece of board in there because the weight of it kind of put a little bend in the top panel. I then connected up the signal cable from the top unit to the bottom printer. The four filament inlets do have these blue um, clips on there. They do need to be uh, removed. That probably would have been easier if I'd used a small screwdriver rather than those needle nose pliers. 
I then inserted the four filament tubes into the backer unit and down to the anti-blocking module. It doesn't matter what order you put them in because the printer software works all that out. Before we go any further, let's check out some of the specs. Printing volumes 250 by 250 by 250. It can use all the standard filament types. Has a printing speed of a maximum of 600 millimeters per second, which makes it very quick. Like I mentioned earlier, you can go up to eight different colors by using the two Ace Pro units. And just like that, we're ready to power up the unit and get the machine all set up through the software. First thing we see on the screen, we're greeted by the Anycubic logo. And then it tells us we need to pick the language. By default, it's set to English here. And we also want to go to a global region. The printer then scans for any available Wi-Fi systems. Mine is uh, picture perfect. Type in the password. Once it's connected, it tells you it's connected. We can then confirm that. We can then hit next. And also you can scan the QR code if you wish to connect the printer through a mobile phone. If not, you go to the next section and there's a little guide there you can click through each step just to give you an understanding of what's going on. Me, I just skipped it and went straight to the printer. This interface came across to me very easy and intuitive. I found things quite easily within the interface. What I did like is how the ACE Pro unit recognized what color filaments I had inserted into the unit. All I needed to do was allocate each color to the different spool numbers and what type of filaments they were. It literally took me a couple minutes to get my head around where everything's located. And like I said earlier, it was a very intuitive, so I was able to pick up this interface very quickly and I was ready to start printing in a very, very short time. There is one very important thing we need to do before we can start using the Cobra S1 printer and that's calibrate the unit. And just like everything else with the setup, it's very easy to do. Under the calibration section, I click full calibration and off it went. There are a number of calibrations it does, including leveling the bed, as well as a resonance test. And what a resonance test is, it works out how much vibration the actual cabinet can take. This calibration process is a very thorough and takes about 20 minutes to go through the whole sequence. Once this test started, I just went off, made myself a cup of tea and a bicky, sat down and just enjoyed my couple minutes of uh, peace before I got started into printing. And with the calibration all done, I was ready to do my very first test print. And would you know it, I screwed up on the very first one. See if you can spot what I just did. Clearly, I was too comfortable and wasn't paying attention. Of course, my very first filament print has to be a Benchy. And you can see already, I'm having some issues with this print. Even though it was having some issues, this test print was very quick and I was printing in about 15 minutes. And look at the mess. What I have in my Ace Pro is uh, PLA filament, but the setting for the test benchy was ABS, hence my issue. So went back to the drawing board, started again, picked the correct benchy with the correct filament, and you can see the huge difference straight away. Again, this took about 15 minutes to print, and I got a fantastic result. You can see it's a really smooth finish, and yeah, very happy with it. Now we know that the Cobra S1 printer works really well. Let's have a bit of play. Now I've installed the software and the software from Anycubic is based on the Orca software and they call it the Slicer Next. Once you've registered and you've logged in, the first thing you're presented with is the Maker Online. And this is a great section because all the models you see here are free to download. Now I want to do a multicolor test. So as I was scrolling through, I came across this uh, Labubu. Very popular character at the moment. I thought I'll give that a go. So clicking on that little icon brings up a dialog box. And all you need to do is click on the download and open. And that brings it straight into your software so you can prepare the model to print. And there it is. I don't have those exact colors, but I will change them up in a sec. 
We then head over to the top right hand corner, click on slice plate, and that works out the coding that needs to send to the printer. Now this is gonna take about 45 minutes or so, somewhere around there. We then click on remote print, and then we need to select our printer, which is the Cobra S1. Now this is where I ran into my next problem. Now looking around, I couldn't figure out what was going on, because at the bottom right hand corner, you can see the start print button, isn't highlighted and this is where I realized what I hadn't done was in the top left hand corner where it actually says the type of printer it's still at the original makers printer which is the Cobra 3 we need to change that to the Cobra S1 we can then head back to the slice plate go through that process again again remote print and straight away you will see the highlighted start print button click on that and that then sends the information wirelessly to the printer. And this is our interface, which they call Workbench. And you can see we've got a fair bit of information as well as control. You can see we've got our four colors there in the middle. Also the print settings that we've set up, our temperatures, and um, that was all worked out during the calibration. On the right hand side, our AnyCubic update, which tells me I do need to um, download a firmware upgrade. We are already 3% into the print. And if we want to see what's going on, it's a matter of uh, hitting that play button and we can have a live view of the printer in action. There are so many amazing projects that you can download from Maker World that'll go straight into the AnyCubic printer. I really like the multicolored printouts, but they do have their issues. This test print came up really nice. The color separation is really crisp. But like I said, they do have their problems. There's a lot of wastage when it comes to this type of printing. This isn't an any cubic issue. This happens with all multicolored printers. For the next test, I wanted to do something a bit more custom. I wanted to create my own project. So it's a matter of hitting new project. Then we can just go to the top and click file import and I'm finding an STL file which happens to be this articulated cuttlefish because the legs of the cuttlefish are articulated it will give me a good test on how well the tolerances are in the printer first thing I need to do is add some trees there because we've got some overhang there from the body of the cuttlefish we can then slice the plate and this is going to take about oh three hours and 20 minutes I'll be very keen to see how well it does on those legs. We then hit remote print. And this time I'm gonna change the color because I don't want it to be orange because I kind of thinking I might make it blue. We've got our Cobra um, S1 printer selected. Hit start print. And that again, sends all the information straight to the printer. And this project I left overnight as I headed home and left it going in my studio. And this is the final result which is a matter of peeling off that plate. I'll tell you, this magnetic plate works really well. It's got a bit of stick to it. And look at that. That came up so well. The articulation in those legs is really, really cool. Very floppy, very sturdy. Details come up great. My 10 year old is gonna love this new toy. As a final test, I want to do something with even more tighter tolerances. So I printed up this um, fidget toy and this was printed directly on the plate without any supports, and it came up great. Final thoughts, I love the idea of the Cobra S1 being completely enclosed, which means you can control the environment that's in there. Also that the Ace Pro enclosure is not only a filament feeder, but it's also a dryer. The operating noise from the unit is extremely low. I'm sitting in the next room, I can barely hear it running. You have a choice of either using the smartphone to control the printer or you can go directly into a PC or a Mac and control the printer from that. My only real operating gripe is that the spaghetti detection system doesn't actually work. I could not get it to function. I don't know how it's supposed to work. I couldn't find any buttons to activate it if there was such a button because the spaghetti just mounted up and it just kept on printing. Having said that, it is actually a great printer, and especially for the price, it's a great value machine. 
Let me know what you thought about it in the comments. And in the meantime, go and check out some of my videos and I'll see you in the next one.